Hello everyone, another Wednesday, another whiskey with me, Phil. Now today we are moving on to something that I hope all of you will know of and all of, all of you will enjoy or have enjoyed at some point in your whiskey drinking career and it's this wonderful green bottle right here. Uh, the Freud 10 cask strength. Now it is different from the regular 10 year old because it's, well, it's cask strength. The regular one is just 40% ABV whereas this absolute behemoth comes in at 59.2%. Uh, it's released in one batch every year or maybe twice a year, but as far as I'm aware, it's once a year. Uh, this is batch number 008. Picked it up in it's like April, May, sometime around then. Uh, split it with a good friend of mine, and it's a great way to experience all these wonderful whiskies that Isla has to offer. <coughs> now, uh, I think everyone knows of Laphroaig. Certainly, everyone knows of Isla whiskies. If you're if you're you know starting drinking whiskey, or if you're big into whiskey, you've definitely heard of Isla, and it's renowned for those really medicinal, salty, smoky, super over the top uh, styles. And Laphroaig is probably the top one in that. It's certainly Laphroaig 10 is the most medicinal. It smells like of rubber and germaline and TCP, which are like antiseptic, you know, medical cleaners and all this kind of thing. Um, the smell of Laphroaig 10 actually reminds me of sitting in a dentist chair and you use like those kind of rubber gloves that are around in your mouth and all that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, not nice to some people, amazing to others. I adore Isla, I think it's absolutely amazing. And it's a style that can't really be replicated anywhere else in Scotch whiskey. People try and some succeed. You know, there's peated Irish whiskey, there is two degree, there's kind of like smoke infused American whiskey. Uh, the Japanese peaked some whiskey, uh, like Yochin uh, Hakshi. Uh, not a lot though, only a tiny bit. And yeah. This is the ultimate of the ultimate of Isla Whiskey, in my opinion. It doesn't really get much better. So to just tell you a little bit about it, um, it cost me 50 quid. 50 pounds! Amazing. For something that is uh, non-chill filtered, it is only barrier filtered. So essentially just like a piece of paper is put over it as it's sent into the big uh, vatting area. Um, it isn't natural colour, which is a little bit of an annoying. Like, similar thing with the lag of Bullen 8 year old, um, like I say. It's a, it is a minor issue, it's not really going to affect my score in any way, but that is not a natural colour. But let's move on. 59.2% and matured in what is uh, what Lefroy call, uh, I think it's seasoned oak barrels, uh, which are recharred. Uh, and obviously a seasoned oak barrel, if it's gained from America, American bourbon distillers season their barrels, so they leave them outside in the wilderness of Kentucky or Colorado or wherever, and essentially let all the the weather have its effect, it kind of it dehydrates the barrel, so you get a more intense bourbon lead flavour. I'm not sure if European uh, kind of bodegas and European oak producers do that. I'm not familiar, but you know, we'll find out. If anyone does know, please let me please leave a comment. Uh, they also rechar the barrels. And this was something that confused me a little bit because typically in America a bourbon barrel is used once, and I'm assuming this is predominantly bourbon matured again. Uh, again, because it is a natural colour, you can't really get a gauge if there's any sherry usage. If there is, it'll be a minimal amount, but I'm going to assume it's mainly bourbon matured. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, so bourbon distillers char the barrel, because uh, it's part of what they do, it gives it gives bourbon its flavour. And then they, once they've used it, they can't legally use it again, so they send it to Ireland, Japan, Scotland, uh, you know, other parts of Europe, wherever it needs it. And we use it, you know, to put our spirit in. It's a very green, recycled business. Um, but to rechar the barrel, uh, two thoughts came into my mind, and hopefully this is something that people in the comments section will talk about. To rechar it, either it's been used quite a lot already, and you know there's not a lot of flavour coming from it. Uh, I'm British, and I, I don't drink tea, uh, but a good way to explain a barrel is, you know, if you make a cup of tea using a, a tea bag, and it's the first use of that tea bag, you get the most flavour. Second use, not as intense. Third use, even less intense. And typically, Scotch distillers won't use a bourbon barrel more than three times. Uh, so, if the barrels have been recharred, either they've been used quite a lot previously and they want to get a bit more flavour out of it, or they want to kind of just let the spirit again take a little bit of a stronghold. Uh, and I've said this before about peated whiskey: when it's young, it's 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 most intense. It's really, really, you know, up there in terms of flavour. It ticks all your boxes and it scares some people, and other people love it. So, yeah, they recharge the barrels. Not really too sure as to why they do the recharring, uh, but we should probably crack on with the actual review because it is one hell of a whiskey. So yeah, we'll crack on with the nose. Oh, 
What more do you want? I mean, seriously, it's everything. This thing, as I've said before, Isla whiskies, most of the time, are going to give you a lot of smoke, a lot of peat. And this does it, but in a way that I've not experienced before. It's extremely floral smoke. It's not hit you in the face, medicinal, salty kind of style. It's got this wonderful, overflowing, you know, perfumed quality about it. Kind of reminds me of like some sort of fruit cake, like not not Christmas cake or anything like that, but some sort of like multi fruit loaf. Dark chocolate, sea salt, all those kind of wonderful flavours. And then it's 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 kind of briny, like olive brine. Not overly salty, I want to point that out, but quite briny. But yeah, I mean, it's what you expect an Isla whiskey to be, but it, it's just a little bit more perfumed. It's a bit more, it's got a few more interesting top notes that you wouldn't really expect. Mm. Go to the taste. It's high ABV, but it's cash strength, as the label would suggest. And it, it comes at you in a way that is so distinctly Laphroaig. If anyone's ever tried, you know, like a villain 12 year old, which is another cash strength, or even Space Eyes like Abelara Boona or Glenn Farkas 105, the natural distillery character will always shine through. Like even though Glenn Farkas is 60%, it's quite subtle. It's a very kind of, you know, it entices you in with these soft kind of caramel apple flavours. A booner for me has always just been like a punch in the face. It's really brutal, that whiskey. This is a combination of the two. So as soon as it hits your tongue, the ABV just kind of darts across all of your mouth. It kind of like sends fireworks everywhere. It lights everything up. But as a result of that, it's not overbearing. And after that kind of initial shock of ABV washes across your tongue, it's just this wealth of chocolate and vanilla and salt and just truly, truly awe-inspiring. Um, it's an experience in a glass. It honestly is. Second time round, you know, your tongue's adjusted to the intensity of everything. And then more of those kind of soft little flicks of bourbon flavour start coming out. Vanilla, coconut. Seem to be running themes in my videos, I only seem to talk about vanilla and coconut. It's like Madeira cake. Vanilla sponge cake. But it's, you know, it's kind of like eating... It's like eating dessert by the sea. It's not overly sweet, I do want to point that out. But you know, after the initial shock of spice and smoke and salt, it's so luxurious as a whiskey. It really is up there with some of the best. The finish is where it kind of kicks off to another level. Because that's my third sip now, and even after I've swallowed it, you kind of, it's not particularly drying, which is interesting for something that's that high in ABV, but it kind of just, it kind of makes your mouth salivate, because it is such a beautiful combination of intense, over-the-top, coastal, typical Scottish flavours, and these wonderful, balanced, subtle, exotic notes that are given from the use of those bourbon barrels. It's 
crazy good. It's ridiculous. Um, if anyone has ever bought a bottle of Lefroy, um, I've sadly not got the tube anymore, but you get like a little uh, booklet in it, and you can become a friend of Lefroy, which is awesome. And essentially, you register your details. You can you know buy through their online shop. You get a little square foot of land at their distillery. You go there, plant a little flag, put a picture of your own face. It's wonderful. And if you are a friend of Lefroy, you get a discount in the shop. And I think they give you 10% off the bottle. So not including shipping fees. The total cost for this bottle, I think, was like £54. £54 for a Lefroy 10, which on its own is one of my favourite bottles of whiskey ever. But it's a Lefroy 10 with no filtration at 59.2% for 50 something pounds. It's not particularly widely available, but it does tend to sell out quite quickly because, you know, fans of this distillery go nuts for it. And uh, me and a colleague just bought it because we just got an email going, oh, you know, Lefroy batch 8 are available. And we're like, great, must get it, must get it now. And purely based on all these wonderful things, and if it does offend some of you, I do apologise, but the fact that it's coloured really, really doesn't bother me in any way. Um, Flavour is more important, and I think filtration affects flavour more than colouring will. Um, by all means, have your own opinions, that's fantastic. But for me, hands down, without any shadow of a doubt, this thing's a 10 out of 10. It says it on the bottle, and it is truly spectacular. I advise all of you to experience it. It's cheaper than its equivalent rivals, by quite a significant degree. Uh, you know, Lagerville in 12 is only released once a year, but that tends to be around sort of £80. Pounds. Uh, the Brook Laddick cash strength stuff with like the Oxomars, you know, they're like a hundred and something. Uh, even like the Black Arts as well. Uh, our bed cash strength things, that's a separate, uh, uh, you know, talk in, in itself because if you're a committee member, they sell out even quicker than any other whiskey brand that I'm aware of. But yeah, this is something that when it's available, doesn't sell out particularly quickly. You know, if you kind of leave it for a week, it'll be gone. And it's affordable, it tastes great. It's one of the greatest spirit experiences on the face of the planet, be it the regular one or the cash strength bottling. So yeah, it was, it was a long time coming, well, what, four, four videos and a whiskey tour, but I finally got a 10. And you can't really beat that at all. I'd be hard pressed to find a whiskey for the price that is equal to this. And that includes things like Abelara Buna and Farkless 105, which I've never really been that much of a fan of anyway. For me, this is the ultimate experience of Isla, and I will stand by that wholeheartedly. Uh, but yes, so that's Lefroy 10, and I'm going to enjoy the rest of this while I cook my dinner. Uh, but to tell you guys a little bit more what's coming up, um, for the next six weeks, there's going to be a beginner's guide, because I was going through uh, Joe's messages when we kind of swapped over, and a lot of people were requesting a beginner's guide. And instead of doing the six weeks, that's still going to happen, so it's going to be Lowlands, Highlands, Speyside, Campbelltown, Isla and the Islands and there'll be two of each whiskey style and I'll be comparing and contrasting and the camera angle might change a bit because I'm going to kind of switch everything to over there so I can have the glasses on the table and kind of show you guys different colour perspectives and that kind of thing. Um, but I thought a big thing to do because it's a beginner's guide is talk about blends as well. So the first video which will be next week's video will be two blends facing off against one another uh, not in like an intense over the top kind of way but we'll be talking about you know, what different blends can offer to the market, produced by different companies, why blends even exist, you know, what's the purpose of a blend, and we'll be talking it through. And it won't be Johnny Walker Black and Shivers 12, because Joe's already done that, and I think it's his highest view video, it's like 35,000 views. Uh, thank you, that's amazing that you all watch that video. Um, so it's going to be two blends that probably aren't that well known, but are fairly new to the market. So I know what one of them is going to be, because it's fairly new, it's cheap, and I quite like it, I really enjoy it. I'm just trying to find another interesting blend to compare it against. Possibly something with a, you know, a nice smoky edge. If you do have any recommendations, by all means let me know. Um, but yeah, that was this week's review. That is Lefroy 10 Cash Strength. That's a 10 out of 10 whiskey. If you can find it, buy it, enjoy it, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. See you guys.